Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Wallace, how are you? I'm just making this quick uh, review video, um, saying hello because I haven't seen you in some time, missed you, although the assembly uh, was great. I uh, just want to do this quick review video so we can get uh, back to a place where we're thinking about Monopoly. It is a new model for us and next week on Thursday uh, we have a quiz and on Monday there's some homework due. So I just wanted to alert you to that. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a new uh, chapter for us. We started um, a few things the other day and some uh, reminders about uh, Monopoly are kind of in this, right? Um, just a few things. Remember that the Monopolis really is different because it has a downward sloping demand curve. First of all, we have one uh, graph. If this is Wallace Monopoly, uh, we have one graph rather than two. We're not doing side-by-side -side graphing. A monopolist that wants to produce more quantity has to respect the downward sloping demand curve and lower the price to sell more unless they happen to be perfectly price discriminating. We also know that the monopolist has a marginal revenue curve that's less than demand. And this is going to be an important feature. Uh, marginal revenue is how uh, one of the keys to figuring out profit maximizing quantity because the monopolist has a marginal revenue curve that's less than demand and demand is downward sloping. We know that the monopolist is going to charge a higher price and is not going to be uh, allocatively efficient because they're going to produce a quantity that's going to be uh, less than perfect competitor. Uh, we'll graph this and we'll show this to you. They're going to be producing at higher costs because they're producing lower quantity than perfect competitor. They're going to be producing not at minimum point on ATC, but at a higher uh, ATC. Uh, so they're not going to be productively efficient. Uh, just to remind you, definitionally, uh, allocatively efficient, kind of the quantity that society wants is always going to be where price is equal to marginal cost. That's the quantity that's allocatively efficient. Think of allocative efficiency as related to a quantity that the market produces. Um, perfect competition in the long run is allocatively efficient. Monopoly is not, okay? It's not because they're never going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. Price is on the demand curve and the monopoly is producing where MR is M equals MC if they're profit maximizing. We're also going to see that that um, the monopolist is generally not producing where price is equal to minimum ATC, okay? The monopolist is producing at a quantity that's going to be less than minimum, uh, it, it, the quantity is less than where perfect competitor would be producing, so they're going to have a greater uh, ATC. And we'll uh, describe that because the demand curve is downward sloping. We're not going to have a tangent point at minimum uh, ATC. Um, we um, did some of this in class. I just wanted to note it. And so one thing to think about when we're drawing monopoly, of course, is that sometimes we're talking about profits and losses. Um, I can graph that for you uh, in class tomorrow to remind you about profits and losses. Uh, but we also think of um, monopoly and assess monopoly in terms of efficiency, right? When we're talking about consumer surplus and producer surplus, we're talking about efficiency. So remember, um, in a monopoly graph, there is um, some uh, demand curve, okay? The demand curve is essentially equal to price. Uh, it's also going to be equal to the average revenue, okay? So kind of you have DARP in the Mr. DARP uh, formula. This is um, your marginal revenue curve that's less than demand. Uh, let's put an MC curve here. Let's kind of go like this, okay? That's our MC curve. Um, and actually, let me take that back a little bit so I can do that. That's our MC curve much better. An MC curve where intersecting MC and MR brings us to a uh, quantity where the monopolist is profit maximizing. So at QM, uh, if the monopoly is going to produce at the profit maximizing quantity where the monopolist can generally do the best, whether they're minimizing loss or maximizing profit, they're gonna produce at that profit maximizing quantity. I also know that they can produce at a profit maximizing price. For the monopolist, it is not at this price. So resist the urge to do that. Uh, what you're looking to do is um, um, actually create uh, the uh, monopolist is going to uh, do the price at um, 
here up to the demand curve. The monopolist at this quantity um, can produce and sell a good for as high as they can get um, on the consumer demand curve. So right here is the price that is the monopoly price, okay? So we have the price, we have uh, the monopolist quantity, and what does this tell us you know, about efficiency, okay? Well, if I'm looking for consumer surplus, um, this uh, area here, this should be consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is everything I'm outlining in red, okay? Why is this uh, consumer surplus? Let's assume that I am looking at um, my uh, demand curve above the price, okay? Every single individual is going to pay price PM for the monopoly good up to quantity QM. So the monopoly sells quantity QM at a price of PM. But there are some uh, consumers that are willing to pay a price that's greater than the monopoly price. Those consumers are getting surplus. They're getting a good deal, right? And so we look at consumer surplus and we say, that's a good deal. I can only include up to the quantity that the monopoly produces and everything that's red is in consumer surplus uh, because anything lower than that price, nobody's getting you know, surplus. If people are willing only to pay a price lower than PM, there's no surplus for them, they're not getting the good. Only the consumers that are uh, interested or willing to pay above PM are getting uh, consumer surplus, okay? So consumer surplus is um, the red uh, area, right? So it's kind of price uh, here um, and then uh, the use of the demand curve. The other um, thing we're interested in is producer surplus, right? And you can kind of bet that the monopoly is going to have, you know, producer surplus, right? This is going to be a uh, beneficial uh, model for the producer, at least more so for the consumer. That's what we would expect. Uh, so we're looking at um, also the price is of interest uh, to the monopolist. This is the price that the monopoly is selling for. This is kind of telling us that the monopolist could um, sell for lower than the price right so all of this is surplus and we're taking that surplus up until the quantity that the monopolist produces right so everything that's shaded in blue is our producer surplus we know that there is going to be dead weight loss okay so I know that um, the allocatively efficient quantity uh, is not being met because the monopolist is producing where would the uh, the allocative efficient quantity B, where price is equal to MC. Price, or the demand curve, okay, is equal to MC at this quantity here. Okay, let's call this quantity, you know, that is, um, let's call it Q star. Um, at that Q star, this is the allocatively efficient quantity society wants, with a quantity that's in Q, and the monopolist is producing QM. Uh, because we have inefficiency, there are um, transactions, right, that are not happening that would have been included. Remember what deadweight loss is. Deadweight loss is like lost consumer and producer surplus. Had the perfect competitor, which doesn't have an MR that's less than demand, so MR would be equal to demand, there'd only be a downward sloping demand curve in a perfectly competitive market, you wouldn't have any deadweight loss because the allocative efficient quantity of Q star would be uh, produced, right? The deadweight loss occurs because the monopolist is underproducing the good. You know, by default, they are producing where MR equals MC if they're profit maximizing and they're producing a quantity that's going to be less than allocative efficiency. If a perfect competitor was producing this, they would be producing at QM and they would also be offering a price. Uh, the perfect competitor's price would be, let's kind of draw this blue line here, this would be the perfect competitor's price, and this also would be um, making it that consumer surplus for the perfect competitor would be much greater. And producer surplus would be much smaller, okay? Um, in order to see that, a little, look at this comparison chart, right? This is what a typical supply and demand graph looks like in perfect competition. What we've been using, you know, up until this point, maximize consumer and producer surplus, right? This is, um, you know, the demand curve in this case happens also to be equal to price. Um, and the supply curve is, you know, uh, in this case, an uh, aggregate of all the firm's marginal cost curves. So we're looking at this being where price is equal to marginal cost. This is the allocative efficient quantity. We have no deadweight loss because the allocative efficient quantity is being produced and because the price 
and the quantity are maximizing, you know, consumer surplus and producer surplus, right? We have maximized efficiency in the monopoly model. On the other hand, we have our downward sloping demand curve, our downward sloping marginal revenue curve. We have our consumer surplus. In this case, right, here is our uh, producer, uh, you know, this, what they're looking at here. Um, now that we have the monopoly graph for B, the monopolist is producing at QM before the consumer surplus used to be, you know, all of this, this giant kind of, you know, vanilla colored triangle uh, that I am showcasing on the perfect uh, competitive graph. If we go over to the monopolist, you know, what happens with the monopolist, right? This section that used to be part of the um, uh, consumer surplus under perfect competition, now the monopolist is producing a lower quantity. They're not producing this quantity that's allocatively efficient anymore. Monopolist is underproducing. They're producing a quantity that's less. Once they produce that quantity, um, we now have a lower quantity. Uh, we also have a higher price. So our consumer surplus is gonna be up here. Some of what used to be consumer surplus, okay, this area that I'm gonna surround, you know, in green here, this used to be consumer surplus, you know, in the perfectly competitive model. Now it's going to go to producer surplus, right? Our full producer surplus is going to be this giant green trapezoid. So some consumer surplus is getting taken up by the producer, right? Consumer um, kind of surplus and value to consumer is going to the producer. In addition to that, some of the consumer surplus is going to deadweight loss and some uh, producer surplus is going to deadweight loss. So we can kind of assess, you know, what the monopoly is all about based on this idea of having inefficiency, right, represented by deadweight loss, a loss of consumer surplus. So consumers are worse off with monopoly and producers are better off. Um, how much better off? You know, it really depends on uh, how much uh, the um, inefficiency is, okay? Uh, but monopolies um, definitely are charging higher price, um, getting lower quantity for society, not allocatively efficient, also not productively efficient, okay? We'll talk about it more in class. I hope that helps just reminds you of some of the big picture things with monopoly and um, we'll remind you tomorrow in class about graphing uh, profits and losses and also we'll start to look at um, a model of natural monopoly okay i'll see you tomorrow